Hi, welcome to this tutorial on factorising. Now in an earlier tutorial I showed you that if we had to expand say 5 bracket 2x minus 3 that would be identical to 5 times 2x which is 10x and 5 times minus 3 which is minus 15. So if we're asked to factorise, okay, factorising is the opposite, the inverse of expanding a bracket. So if I had 10x minus 15 and I was asked to factorise this, what I would get back is 5 bracket 2x minus 3. So you can see it's the opposite of expanding a bracket. Now in this particular tutorial what I'm going to run through is factorising expressions like these. Okay? Now, all of these examples that I've got here have got something special that I've put in them. Now you might like to try factorizing these if you're fairly familiar with factorizing and you just want this as a practice and just pause the video and then come back and check your answers. But if you're unfamiliar with factorizing I'll show you how to do these ones. Okay? Now Whenever you've got to factorise an expression, the first thing that you should be doing is always try and look to see if there are any highest common factors, HCFs in other words we call them, okay, in the terms in your expression. So what do I mean by that? Well let's take the first one for instance, 4x plus 12. You'll notice we've got a couple of terms here, okay. And what we need to do is try and see, first of all, is there a number that goes into the 4 and the 12, or is there a common letter that is in both terms? Well, first of all, let's have a look at 4 and 12. Is there a common number that goes into 4 and 12? Well, indeed there is. There's 2, for instance. 2 goes into both 4 and 12, but it's not the highest number that goes into 4 and 12. It's not the highest common factor. The highest common factor is in fact 4. 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 12 three times. So what we do is we put that highest common factor here. Okay. As for letters, you'll notice we've got an x in this term, but we haven't got another letter in this term, so there are no common factors. It is just simply 4, which is the highest common factor. So we put a bracket like this, okay, and we need to put two terms in here so that when we multiply the 4 with each of these two terms, we get 4x plus 12. Well, first of all, it's going to be 4 times x that will give 4x. So we put x there. 4 times x, 4x. Now what do you have to multiply 4 by to give plus 12? Well it's going to be plus 3. So we have 4 bracket x plus 3. If you were to expand this you'd get 4x and 4 times 3 is 12. 4x plus 12. So hopefully you can see that 4x plus 12 factorised then is 4 bracket x plus 3. Okay, we've got another one here which is fairly similar to this one. So, what's the highest common factor here between these two terms? Well, it's going to be 7. 7 is the highest number that goes into the 7 here and also the 7 here. So we've got 7. There is no letter that is common, okay, so just the 7. So we have a bracket, and so it's going to be 7 times the x to give 7x. Now, I purposely picked this one purely because you'll notice you've got the same common factor here. So what do you multiply 7 by to give 7? Or should I say minus 7? It's going to be minus 1. So you put minus 1 there. 7 bracket x minus 1. If you expand this... 7x, 7 times minus 1, minus 7. 7x minus 7, okay? Now what about this example? Well, it looks a bit more complicated than the couple of ones that have been before. 
Looking at the numbers, 5 and the 4, have we got a common factor between 5 and 4? No. Okay, there's no number apart from 1, but that's just trivial, that goes into 5 and 4. But what have we got here? a cubed b to the 5. I'll tell you what, what we'll do is just step to the side here and just remind ourselves what this really means. 5a cubed b to the 5, that's short for 5 times a cubed, that's a, 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 a times a times a, and b to the 5, that's b times b times b times b times b. And then we've got minus 4ab squared, that's short for 4 times an a, times b squared, so that's b times b, 4abb. Now, what have we got that is common? Well, as I said earlier, we've got no number that is common that goes into 5 and 4, but we do have an a in both of these two terms. Look, we've got an a there, let's just cross it off, and we've got one a there. So a is a common factor. Let's put that a up here. All right. Are there any other common factors between these two terms? Yes, there is. Okay. We've got a b, a b that's in this term. Okay, let's just cross that one off there. We've got a b here. But we've also got another b. We've got a b there and we've got a b there. So in fact, we've got b, b in each term, b, b. b squared, in other words, is the highest common factor. So put b squared. So we've got an a and a b times a b, a b squared, that appears in both of these two terms. And that's the highest common factors that we've got. So we put a bracket. And so what have we got that's left? Well, for the first one, we've got 5 times a a b b b, 5 a squared b cubed. So we just put that in as 5 a squared b cubed. What else have we got in the second term? What's left over? Well, we've got the ABB, AB squared. Okay, we've taken that out. We've just got left with the minus 4. So put minus 4 there. So when you multiply AB squared by each of these two terms, you will get what we've got up here. Now, with a bit of practice, you won't need to write this in. Okay, you should be able to just see it. Okay. Let's just take this out now, okay? So that's what you should really present your solution as. Now when we come on to this one, we've got three terms here. So, are there any common factors? Yes, 5 goes into each of these three terms. So we'll put 5 here. And I gave this example just to show you that you don't have to have two terms. You can have three terms. So we've got a 5 that's common. And there are no letters, so it's just 5 bracket, and then you've got 5 times 4x squared will give 20x squared. So it's 4x squared goes there. And then we've got 5 times something to give minus 15x. Well, it's got to be minus 3x. And what do you multiply 5 by to give plus 25? Well, it's got to be plus 5. So hopefully you're getting the idea now. Well, with this example here, I've gone for three terms, and it's very similar to this kind of one up here. So, as far as the numbers go, 15, 12, 9, is there a number, a highest number that goes into each of these numbers, 15, 12, and 9? Yes, there is. It's 3. And what about the letters? Is there an x in every one? Yes, there is. There's an x there, an x there, an x there. But there's also more than just that. There's another x. x squared appears in each one of these three terms. So, is there an x cubed in each term? No, there's not. There is an x cubed in here, there's x cubed in here, but there isn't in here. Just x squared. So, x squared is a common factor. And what about the y's? Well, hopefully you can see now that there's just a maximum of one y in each of the terms. Okay, not a y squared. Y squared here, yes, but not a y squared here. There would be a y squared in y cubed, but the maximum we can get is just simply a y. So we've got 3x squared y. 
put a bracket here. So what have we got to multiply 3x squared y by to give 15x to the 5y squared? Well, it's got to be a 5 because 3 5s are 15. We've already got an x squared. So in x to the 5, we would be left with x times x times x, x cubed in other words. So x squared times x cubed is x to the 5. We've got a y here. What do you need to multiply y by to give y squared? Well, another y. There you go. As for this term here, 12x to 4y, what are we going to have? We need a 4 to give us the 12. We've already got the x squared. We've got x to the 4 here, so we need another x squared. We've got a y here, and we've just got a y here, so we don't need any more y's, so just 4x squared. As for the last term, minus 9x squared y cubed, what do you multiply a 3 by to give minus 9 or minus 3? We've got x squared. There is an x squared here, so don't want any more x's. We've got a y here, so we just need another y squared to bring that up to y cubed. So there you go, y squared. OK, so that's that one factorized. And lastly, this one, well, I picked this one because we've got a couple of terms. But in this, we've got common factors. And that common factor is x squared minus y. You've got it here, and you've got it here. So with this one, you just have x squared minus y as the common factor, and you have a bracket. And what are you multiplying x squared minus y by to give this term? Well, just simply the 3. So you put the 3 there. And in this second term, what are you multiplying the factor x squared minus y by? Well, it's got to be minus 2x. So you put minus 2x in. All right? Well, I've given you lots of different types of expressions where the first thing you check for is common factors. And they must be the highest common factor, the HCF. So you take the HCF, the highest common factor, out the front of every bracket, and then you find out what are the other terms that you need to put in each of the brackets. OK? So I hope you got that. And uh, as I say, there's more to factorizing than just this. But every time you're asked to factorize something, always check to see if there's highest common factors. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial.